welcome everybody. Good day to you all to this uh, one hour webinar on rapid deployment of logical domains. Okay. Um, there's quite a lot of practical elements to this particular webinar to demonstrate how uh, rapid deployment works, but I'm going to start off by just covering the, the, a little bit of the basics again. Uh, we did run a webinar a week or two ago on how to establish uh, the logical domains control software on a T-series server. But in case you missed it, I'm going to do a few minutes review just to remind everybody and to put things into perspective uh, so you can understand um, how the machine is configured before we actually start the deployment of uh, another logical domain. Uh, we could call this webinar how to create a Solaris operating system instance in minutes rather than hours. Uh, that's not necessarily true if you have a number of different types of configuration, but if you're uh, rolling out the same type of operating system instance uh, numerous times, then you know this, this what we're covering in this webinar is very very suitable. Yeah. Now, as you probably realise, uh, the logical domains uh, facility. Uh, runs on Oracle's T-series servers, also known as core multi-threaded, on uh, what was inherited from the Sun product line and includes UltraSpark uh, processors uh, going through T1, T2, uh, the T3 series and the T4 which begins shipping uh, in December as, as far as we can make out from Oracle. Um, these servers support processor chips which have numerous cores. Each core has a number of threads, each of which is regarded as a separate CPU, uh, which I can demonstrate actually. If I uh, come into this window on the right hand side, this is actually logged in to uh, a T-series server. And if I do PSR info, which is a standard operating system command that you're probably familiar with. This will show the processes assigned to this particular system, which in fact is 8 in all, 0 to 7. So as far as the operating system is concerned, each of the threads is a separate processor. Okay. Uh, the seminar is aimed at uh, people who have some uh, Solaris administration experience and probably also expecting you to have a little bit of an understanding of the virtual uh, technology that's available on systems these days. Okay. We're using a uh, Spark uh, system T5120. Which you can see here. Host name of Whale. It has um, eight cores of eight threads in each core. So 64 uh, apparent processors and uh, a certain amount of memory, hard, hard disk, PCI slots and so forth. And using the logical domain software and the T-series architecture, we can create uh, logical divisions of the hardware known as logical domains. So we can effectively create physical systems, as it were, with a certain number of processors, uh, disk space and so forth. And each one of course runs as an independent operating system. You can uh, run your applications within it, your development. Uh, you can patch each one separately. So you can use it as a test and development database very easily. Um, and it truly is an independent uh, hardware resource. Of course, things like uh, PCI buses and the network interfaces uh, can also be uh, assigned to uh, various components of the domain, usually as virtual devices. Okay. What we're going to look at then today is a quick review of control domain configuration, the control domain being the master domain, if you like, the initially installed Solaris operating system in which the logical domains manager software has been installed. And then using the logical domains manager software, we can create um, 
of the machines, the actual guest domains and so forth. Okay. Uh, the system provides us with the LDM command to allow us to actually do that. Uh, then we'll look at creating a guest domain, uh, getting it started, uh, accessing the console of it, which actually you can see over here, there's one already done, uh, how to boot the, the guest domain. Uh, and then what we're going to do is build uh, a something called a um, emulated volume, uh, which is the disk back end to the guest domain. Uh, we're going to sysunconfig the guest domain. Uh, if you've had some Solaris experience, the sysunconfig command, uh, you'll know, uh, completely strips away the identity of the machine. Okay? So once you boot it the next time round, it stops and asks you all the questions about what's the host name, what is the uh, geographic region, you know, what is the IP address and all this stuff. And when, once we've sysunconfigged the system, we're going to halt it. And then on the control domain, we're going to use the ZFS, the ZFS facility to snapshot the entire operating system and clone it to create copies to allow us then to rapidly deploy uh, new guest domains very, very quickly. And I'm actually going to do this. So once we've got our uh, domain configured, I'm going to show you how we actually go about creating an entire domain based on a clone. So you'll see it all in practice as well. Okay. There will be uh, breaks when some of the practicals will take a little while, and that will then give you the opportunity to ask uh, a few questions, and for us to maybe fill in a few details of the other uh, facilities that are related. Okay. Uh, skill builders are involved in this technology quite heavily, and uh, there's just a note in the slides to say that uh, skill builders have all the background, the resources, uh, the qualifications in Solaris, and much experience with the T-Series. So if anything is of interest uh, that comes out of this webinar and you're interested in the technology or you'd like to know more about it, uh, feel free to call somebody on the number that is given here in the notes. Okay. Back to the control domain. When you initially um, set up your T-Series server, take it out of the box if you like, uh, rack it up and, and boot it, it normally comes configured with the Solaris operating system, but you can actually install your own if you prefer to do so. Okay? And you can build it just like any other Solaris system. So from the start, uh, you can just build the thing, not bother with the logical domain software, and have goodness knows how many CPUs and memory uh, to use. But of course, the main strength of these systems is the ability to create multiple machines within it. Uh, and you know, you've effectively got a data center in a box with your uh, database applications, your web services, or all, all your development, your testing, all in one physical space. So uh, just to let you know, you can build the initial operating system if you want, in the normal way that you would build any Spark system. You can use a DVD if the system has one, or you can set up network booting. And there's an example of booting over the network, typically uh, to perform an installation. Now, once the control domain is up and running, uh, you would then uh, install the logical domains manager software. Now, we did go through this on the last webinar, so I haven't repeated the instructions. Uh, what I've shown here is once you've got the logical domains manager software installed, uh, you then have to configure virtual services to support the services you're going to provide the guest domains. Okay. And here's an example, again, just a brief um, view of what I had to do to configure the control domain. Now, creating a disk service, LDM, add VDS, primary VDS zero, and the name of the default domain uh, is called primary. A bit like uh, the system is also the global zone, and you can have other non-global zones, 
uh, when it comes to logical domains, the primary domain is like the global zone, if you like, and you do everything uh, from the primary domain to configure or change the other domains while you're running. So this is adding a disk controller, a virtual disk controller, and you'll see later how we can add disks to it. 